Hello everyone, it's your boy, King Mob, going back into Disco Elysium once again. Hey there, Hotspot Huntress, good to see you. Glad you can make the stream. All right, let's see here. I cannot hear anything. There we go. Beautiful. I'm looking forward to playing this all week. We're only 10 days away from Christmas. Happy holidays, everyone. drained of all of its booze is frozen to the ice this is it the scene of the party the fire pit cigarettes and empty bottles all evidence it sure does look like a lot of folks partied here looks like they were here a while judging from all the bottles the sunken motor carriage provided them a focal point like a goose ice sculpture or a chocolate fountain Hey, Kim, looks like we've had a couple partygoers here. Looks like it. Looks like they had a great time laughing here. Hey, let's keep moving, detective. Lieutenant adjusts his glasses. I gotta make my money for the day, cause yeah, and I gotta pay to sleep. Look in the snow. I lead away from the accident. The boat tucked in there underneath the tarpaulin cover. Great news. The boat is big enough for a grown man like you to fit underneath it in a supine position. Wait, what would I be doing underneath under them there? I don't know. Sleeping? What do people do under boats? This is merely a measurement from your visual cortex. Do with it what you want. Something Saint Gislain something something. 88. Great news, I found somewhere new to sleep. Huh? Uh, um... The great news, I found somewhere to sleep. Under the boat here, it'll be free. Sarcastic self-pity is not what we need at this moment, officer. I understand the situation looks grim, but we must continue with our investigation. I think it was just him. You have a home somewhere. All cops do. When this is done, you can return. I don't think I can return. And these are a bunch of footsteps. All. All leading towards the crash. Some leading away. Oh. See, the walker's either very confused or drunk out of his mind. Oh, I could guess. Underneath the boats has recently been tarred. The fisherman shacks. Hey, I haven't seen RCM around in ages. A wedding stone. Well worn and covered in rust. Fisherman shacks. Saram, saram, rum. Try 
construction material. Whoever planned to build this house left it in a hurry. You can't see in the house from this angle. Here's some kind of cozy sound of, of a heater sputtering. Hmm. Hi, officer. A woman in a raincoat stands in the quay, considering an overturned boat. A sword and a scabbard hangs from her hip. Anything I can help you with? Mm, it depends. Where are we exactly? A fishing village on the seashore. This place doesn't really have a name. It's sometimes called Illicibla. Kuna was checking for a corpse, maybe. Are they wouldn't they? Go away. Ha! <laughs> Thank you. The sign on the street leading here is illegible. Has been since they built this place. The wind rattles your earrings. First question. What is the your name? name is Lillian. People call me Net Picker. I think I have time for questions. And that was actually the second one. She gestures towards the fishnets. Indeed. You're always confused as to your whereabouts. <laughs> I'm looking for someone. Maybe you can help? Let's see. Who are you looking for? Looking for missing cryptozoologists. Uh, I don't think I know what these are. Care to elaborate? People who look for animals who are hard to Aha. find. Like snowmen. Uh, snowmen? I haven't heard about those. Two old guys have been wandering around here, nose in sand, talking nonsense about snowmen and the like. Wait, the like? Right. Not only snowmen, also, green men, monkey men, burning rhinos. You get the picture. Hey, Sedgman. Thanks for joining us. Oh, you're getting it. And it is gorgeous. <laughs> where did they go? I don't really know. Further down the peninsula, I guess. I mean, that's where they were heading. Who else are you looking for besides snowmen? I'm not really looking for anyone else right now. Well, how yes. can I assist you then, officer? What do you do around like here? Like I said, fish mostly. Sail the waves, take care of the kids, pick nets. Right now, I'm tarring a little skiff. Yeah, enough to make a living? Sometimes I also walk to the beach to see what the sea has given up. The sea is full of surprises. Hmm. Interesting. What have you found? Wood. Pieces of glass. Every once in a while, we see dead bodies. Human, animal, fish, other odd sea creatures. A mine washed ashore once. Our earrings are uh, fishing wares. Bottles, drugs also. Lost cargo in general. Most of the time it's just wood and glass. All right. Major choice moment. You only get to ask one thing. It would be weird to say them all. Choose wisely. You know about this human body. Well, you're barking under the wrong tree then, officer. I have no interest in floaters. Seen enough of them in my life already. Very unattractive bunch. Nice sword. Does that come with the story? Unfortunately, the factory sold this one with a three-year warranty instead of story. <laughs> it's to intimidate folks, mostly. It is imposing. It's a regular mass-produced sword, like a shovel or an axe. Nothing fancy, just for intimidation. Why do you need intimidation tactics? From time to time, people need a lesson in respect. That's just the way it is. Back in the day, I caught the eyes of many men. <laughs> and believe me, men need a lesson in manners from time to time. Your typical patriarchal nonsense. Uh, sure. Venomosity. But... Boys will be boys, and God knows we don't have many around. So far, the sword has been enough to keep them in line. Why don't more women arm themselves are so effective? What makes you think we haven't? 
The truth is that almost everyone in this life is scared and tired and stupid and too dull for that. That goes for men too. But they put on an act for us. Pretend like everything's good and living in shit doesn't bother them. Like anyone falls for that. True, most people I've met are scared. I, no one wants to talk about how frightened they are. But only frightened people are really dangerous. And plenty of them are dangerous. So where are all the men now? Some went to patch their wounds, their lesson learned. Others were more thick-headed. And one of them, I ended up marrying. Where's your husband now? Gone. Gone where? To the waves. The sea took him. It was a long time ago. Oh, say no more, wait for her to continue. He didn't respect the sea. Went out there, drunk like a skunk, and sure enough, one day, the boat was found floating empty. The bloated corpse turned up two weeks later. Now, before you tell me how sorry you are for my loss, know that it was four years ago, and I've moved on. There's only so much mourning you can do for a drunk with sinewy muscles. Time is really the best cure for sorrow, isn't it? Us working folk don't have the luxury to be bed sick with melancholy. I buried him, mourned for an appropriate amount of time, and went on. Life didn't really change that much for me and the kids. Last of the village where two little kids are playing with look like rocks. This is neither a touchy nor a very interesting topic for her. She looks like she's ready to go on a date with another, better, drunk. Ask her. Both of you could need some action. No. So I take it that's her skiff. Sure is. The sun, I call her, coated with a fresh layer of tar just yesterday. It'll take some time for it to dry, assuming the sunny days continue. I have previously expert drunk. Huntress. Previously. Sunny days, catch a snowflake in your palm. Bye. Sunny days. You got a problem with that? No, ma'am. We have no quarrel with sunny days. Good. It would have been bad news had it turned out it wasn't a sunny day. Bad news for the skiff. Bad news for the nets. Bad news for the kids. There's a moment's silence. She looks at the slushy snow melt on the yellow belly of the boat. When do you, when do you think the boat will be ready? In time, when the sea turns and the wind settles, she will be ready. My prediction. It will be at least two days. They're seeing you. Franco-Nigerian cavalry boots. I'll take those. There we go. Now I look like a right mess. Wow, I am just... Woo! Planks creak, creak beneath your weight. Letter leads to a school of fish swimming in the kelp. Yeah, an expert drunk. We really need to get out there and catch something. What was floating fleet in the water, unmoored. It's locked tight. Next to a bucket of clothes hums an odd melody. Her eyes are closed. You're not sure about the melody, but it might be Saf Samaran, possibly Sigean, also known as the Apricot Suzrunti. 
I want Saber Mom to go sailing off with Joyce on her yacht. Yeah, that'd be nice. PhD in self destruction. Yeah. It's... Welcome to the fishing village. Please lean in closer. I have cataracts. Then how does she know you're here? In for. Oh, welcome, police officer. We don't cause any trouble around here. And we don't want any trouble either. Well, this lady says, Equus, I see. Hmm. We are not here to cause any trouble, madame. Well, what he said, we're cops. We don't cause trouble, we take care of trouble. Oh, of course. Last time we saw you around here was 12 years ago. You also <laughs> came to take care of trouble then. Wish you did. But still, in Martinez, you're considered an ill omen. Wait, I've been here before? No, not you personally. I met the RCM. Some of the men got into a fight. One of them killed another. Locked himself in that woodshed over there. She points to the building behind her. He was boarding. Needed some help opening the door. You got it open for him. and took him to think about what he'd done in a more secluded place. Somewhere more quiet. She says it as if he was on some kind of spiritual retreat. What kind of ill omen are we talking about? Oh, the usual. Dark tidings. Black hound. That's you, all right. A black hound licking your own heels. <sighs> well, is there an ill omen? Why hasn't anyone told me that? Maybe they are afraid. Why? Because you're an ill omen. But you're still welcome here. As long as men with guns aren't chasing you. And maybe even then, because that's the kind of fishing village we've built. I'm sorry there's not a lot of room to park the motor carriage, and not a lot of houses, or a lot of people. My kids are long gone, searching for treasure. So are others. Ah, look at me ramble on. What brings you to us? Tell about yourself. Who exactly are you here? Me? No one. Just an old washerwoman. Mother called me Isabel, if that's what you're asking. And my married name is Sadie. Now it's your turn, Mr. Lieutenant W. Freighter Harrier Dubois. Why the handle you got there? So many titles. One of them double. What is what is in this fishing Just village? Us. It's barely a village anymore. We almost don't exist. What do you mean? This is pretty much a non place. A gap. A blank spot on the map. Just a cluster of nameless shacks on a nameless street. The place is so pornographically poor, it's not even funny. Gotta be something here. Tell me. Over there, you can find more of the same. Sharks and trees growing wild. That's the pox. The pox? What's that? An old military hospital and its surroundings. Or it used to be during the time of the suzerain. After the war, it was turned into a goodwill hospital for shell shock veterans and folks looking for some quiet in the old sanatorium gardens. Now the area is crisscrossed with nameless streets and makeshift cinder block houses. Shacks as far as the eye can see. What happened to the hospital? The goodwill ran out. The staff left and the place was shut down. It's long gone by now. What's in this village? Well, there's Lillian and her kids. If you knew folks live in the house to the east, but they are away right now. And then there's the drunks. <sighs> Not a pretty sight, but there's little we can do about it. Home is home, even for them. Not Lillian already. Lillian is tough. Tougher than the men here, at least. If it wasn't for her and the kids, this place won't have a spark of life left. Haven't seen any drunks yet, though. Sooner or later, you'll see for yourself. 
Don't have to look long to find these guys. She slowly shakes her head. This place is pornographically poor. The lack of wealth is the one thing we've got in abundance. The woman smiles cryptically. This cold, cynical smile. Rados fits with the general ambiance here. I Sometimes it's as though I'm also gotten lost inside this nameless nothing. I'm lost too. Oh, it seems to be a common theme these days. I think I'm in the process of finding myself again. Isn't that what people always think when they are lost? Excuse me. Something I can do for you to find your way, officer? All right, another topic I'd like to address. He nods, rinsing another piece of cloth. What's further down the coast? Not much. There's the abandoned church, the Dolorian Church of Humanity. It's been there since before my time, even. Why is it abandoned? Some things just don't fly, officer. Look around. Who'd go to church here? They built it 300 years ago. Must have been nicer then. Cheers. So, they don't hold services there anymore? The Ecclesiastes? No, we've tried, but things just keep happening. Crime, accidents, other things. The place never stays open. It's a pity. It used to be such a nice church. What else is down the coast? Before you get to the church, there's some ruins, an apartment complex, or some kind of electrical plant. Run-down bunch of houses. Empty. Uh, which is it, apartments or electrical pad? I can see it being both. I don't know exactly. A pre-war place. It used to be something. Before the war. I wasn't here then, you know. Was born in Samara. Anything else of note? Of note? The old fish market up on the boardwalk. But it's closed. Who'd want to come to a fish market here? No one. That's why it's closed. It was once a bustling place, back when I was young, and so was everyone else. Now, what catch we do bring in goes straight into a lorry for the Delta or somewhere else. <sighs> That's it? There's got to be more on the coast. What? You're one of those real estate people with big plans? If you want a development opportunity, you can check out the abandoned building over at Lensen. Used to be a supply depot, we think, sending goods and ammo across the bay. It's jammed shut, though. We tried to get in, see if there was anything to sell or scavenge, but it's impossible. Nothing is impossible, surely. <laughs> and now you know everything there is to know about this coast. He drops a bar of soap into the bucket with a splash. I guess someone stay around here. Stay? Most people here are trying to leave. That said, if lodgings is what you're looking for, I've got a free room in the shack. How much is it? I won't charge you for it. Take it as a gesture of goodwill from the village to the RCM. This is this guy, Gart, who makes me give him money every night so I don't die out in the cold. Hmm. That's exactly how they get ya. That's why we built our own cinder block houses on the seaside. So we don't have to give money to those crooks. We might not look like much, but they are ours. Wait, why isn't anyone using the room? My kids grew up and left like they do. The house is long empty now. I live in the small side attachment. It's easier and cheaper to keep warm. This one more time, I can, I can just have the room? Aye. The room is pretty bare bones. But it's got a bed and roof over it. That's more than some folks have around here. When Varsan communist revolutionary Ignaz Nielsen was in hiding, he stayed in a hut on the Boreal Plateau for 10 months. Jeez. Wow, racism, like out the gate. It would help me to stay in touch with the proletariat. You best not be plotting another revolution under my roof. We barely got through the last one. But the room, 
Do you want it? Yes, you got yourself a tenant. Don't make an old woman regret opening her house to the police. He appears from under her apron and hands well, it to you. if you are not in the hostel in the morning, I'll know where to find you. Here, in a shack. He looks around and adds, here, in a shack. Yep. Alright, I'm off. The door has seen better days. The layer of paint has started to peel off due to the salt and wind from the sea. Even the lock looks slightly rusted. Unlock the shack door with the key. I'll wait outside to give you some time and privacy to check out your new living arrangement. But just so you know, after we are done with the day, I'll still be staying in the whirling in rags for the night. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. The key turns. Excellent. Let's check it out. Oh, nice. Bunch of things. Ooh. Korogev. Korog... Kordagev jacket. Plus one logic. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see the reflection of your face in it. Adorned with the expression. Let's give it a try. Get the stuff expression from happening. Fail. It's too late. Like an image on film. The expression belongs to your primary motor cortex. It would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. Let the mirror be for now. See this way, the waves, the sea, a church. Old science fiction magazine. Books about bird watching. An almanac from 39. Intricate heat engine comes quietly, giving off a pleasant warmth. Warbirds creak under your step. On the table, you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next to it, a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. You're shaving the right call. The water reflects back a vague image of your face. Nose bulbous and red. Hair unkempt. Wrinkles lining the eyes and forehead. The stash is gigantic. A fresh start looms ahead. Clean yourself up and be born anew. Do it, time to shave. Get these mutton chops off. Like an artist with a brush or a master swordsman, you use the small mirror and the straight razor with some soap to remove all that unkempt hair from below the nose line. The sharp blade chafes against your skin, producing a scratching sound. The surface underneath the beard feels tender, the air brushing against it chilly. Feel your, class, fresh, feel your clean shaven cheeks. It feels so smooth. Surprisingly so. A feeling of freshness overcomes you, as if you just came from a cold bath. A shaving the right call. The water reflects back a vague image of your clean-shaven face. Despite the bulbous nose, unkempt hair, and persistent swelling, <laughs> you look a little younger, maybe. You almost look like a professional. Leave. Oh god, did it slit your throat or something? Yeah, it could have happened. The suicide of Kraz Mazov. It's clearly a lie. Kraz Mazov didn't shoot himself. Reaction was on the counteroffensive. The State Day Palace in Mirova was surrounded. He was either assassinated or died in the bombing. You might even have evidence to support this somewhere in your brain. Mazov was never given a state funeral by the communists. Some people even say the body that was recovered from the ruins wasn't his. There, good. Hero restored to glory. Carry on, comrade. White check failures heal our morale. Wow. Plus one Rengerick. The edge of the map, the landmass begins to disintegrate into pure trigonometry. The ocean melts, becoming a tangle of signs and coastlines. The mountain range turns into a sh sharp, angled azimuth. It's green rain shadow dithers like a music vanishing into a waveform, and then it vanishes. This is the end. A half-numbered textbook from your childhood. A porch collapsing on the edge of an isola. The transition from reality to pale. A single vector shoots out like a rocket. It's a motorway south, splintering off from the gnome pale. To where? Where does it go? Hmm.
can I abandon this? I have to pay the money to forget it. Ah! Or I can unlock something new. What do I got? Do I have anything? No. Okay. That was definitely worth it. You see a boat. <laughs> the bed is comforting, if a bit run down. Still, you've earned a rest. True, it's highlighted the expression. I didn't even think about that. Oh. No time to sleep yet. Hey, I've stayed in worse. This is just hanging out in this little niche. Yes. So, point at your face. I shaved. Yes. Uh, um, I don't know what to say. Uh, <clears throat> perhaps. Uh, what is it? You can tell me, Kim. I'm not really sure about this turn of events. I think the mutton chops might have been a better idea. They sort of seem to cover up some of the. Um... He stops. Either way, good on you. You were saying? <sighs> Why did the 41st send me? Look at you. It's because you're a failure. They sent you to slight Precinct 57. Yeah, that makes more sense than some of the other stuff I thought of. Just think about it for a second. You're a raging alcoholic who showed up three days late wearing this stained disco garb. You weren't sent here <laughs> to win. Kim, what if I precinct sent me on this case because I'm a fuck up? Like as a joke. I considered it. So it's true. It would be immensely ugly of them, not to mention unprofessional. But I also think it's somewhat unlikely. What's that? I checked the records. This jurisdiction dispute, through Policies Martinez, reaches back to the 30s. It's as old as my station. And all this time, we can't decide who gets Martinez? I think, yes, both stations would prefer a win. Ah, so you are their finest. I am the finest of nothing. Do they see me as a safe bet? Safe? No. But you are old. You've made it this far. Something has brought you through. We've only just started working together, so I don't know what it is yet. But it's there. So no, I don't think they sent you as a joke. And even if they did, they are in for a surprise. Oh, Kim is awesome. He's best boyfriend. Absolute best boyfriend. I really enjoy this game. Yes, Kim is a treasure. I am a mess. White curtains have been drawn shut. No looking in. Well, that's the problem. I'm kind of... Kind of overly curious. Kind of a... Dust-covered linens and dried tulips on a bed. Plus one to the kingdom of conscience. What is that? Inter Islery trousers. What is that? I mean, it doesn't do anything yet, but at least, at least I'm not wearing those damn flare cuts. It's a shirt. Electrochemistry, Jesus. <sighs> oh. Slowly I'm getting out of my horrifying disco wear. Mm. These are some wonderfully regular pants. Not too tight, not too loose, moderate in every sense. You blend right in at some pleasant dinner party. I like regular normal things. Mm -hmm. I know you do. These inter Isolari pants are like wearing a perfect compromise in your nether regions. No one will call the moral intern on you like this. That's for sure. You're a little more moralist now, buddy. Yeah. A little more normal. Even if you didn't want to be. Makes sense. This is what wearing boring office trousers does to you. Ugh, ugh. I don't want to wear my... <laughs> yes. Everything I've been wearing is like 
gross and partied in. I almost prefer wearing someone else's stuff. Sounds of life to the north. Washboard scrubs the filth from fabric. Cinderblock's chart. A makeshift fire pit with magazines for lighting. Sentra, stop! Don't call the me that! The beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. You can revisit the bench if you ever need to pass the time when Lieutenant Kitsuragi is gone. Can I sit down for a moment? Just for a moment, please. Please. Owl. Ah, there it is. That's what she was saying. Go away. <laughs> I didn't even see that earlier. It looks like Tagalog? Indonesian, maybe? Okay, I'll take that. Oh, Jesus. Those are the drunks. I'll talk to the boys first. The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone. He can't be more than five years old. The other one looks indistinguishable from him. He watches his brother kick the stone with his tongue lolling out of his mouth. Must be Leon's twins. This one doesn't say anything, kicking the concrete with his worn out sneaker. Lily's our mom. Where's the other one still lolling out of his mouth? You already said that. The stone kicker laughs suddenly. His head is too large for his shoulders. The other one laughs as well. Wow, so intellectually stimulating. Yeah, it's look identical. The stone kicking one becomes frantic all of a sudden, as if that's something to be scared of. The obvious fact that you just stated. He looks just like me. Yeah, I've said that. The boy doesn't answer. His brother throws another rock. Both of their hair is covered in some kind of dirt. The rock kicker was just being shy, but now he's enthusiastic again. You're bad with kids. Tenek remarks evidently. And what are you, Kid Master General? Maybe I am. Now, how about some actual police work? We are not getting anything here. Hi, kids. Take care. I'm not going to call them stupid, even though they are. All kids are stupid. I was a stupid kid once. Hard to see details. Colors all warm and welcoming or cozy, though. Primer for small kids. Use the interact button to inventory to spec the book. Flower trough where nothing really grows. Maybe in spring. Textbook for the first grade in primary school. On the cover are humanoid teddy bears pushing a wheelbarrow full of letters. He's not doing a good job. The later S is dangerously dangling from the call. The E fell off a long time ago. Children should pay more attention. You hold in your hand the colorful primer. The title reads, A Primer for Small Kids. Exactly what I need. Mm, this book will show you the score. Get you oriented with those basic concepts you appear to be hazy on. The anthropomorphic bear will give you the lowdown of your life. On what? The alphabet. Exactly what I need. Mm, the alphabet. Flip through the page. Every page has one word designating one letter of the alphabet with a faded illustration. Most of them are scientific and cultural principles. It goes as follows. Let's do this. A is for azimuth. B is for boreas. C is for cosine. D is for diamite. E is for ellipse. F is for phlogiston. G is for gamut. H is for homeboy. I is for econ. J is for eura. K is for collapse. L is for laudanum. M is for myriad. N is for nadir. O is for aureole. P is for perihelion. Yeah. Q is for quasar. R 
is for rhododendron. S is for sinus. T is for tree color. U is for ultra. V is for vector. W is for var height. X is for xylophone. Y is for ustava. Z is for zenith. That's it? That's it. You know the alphabet now. And what's called the ill, the international language developed by the scientists of the grad in the 20s? Sinus means sign, for example. Okay, I know the alphabet now. Good. I also know the alphabet. It is a very useful skill to have, he thinks, for all sorts of life activities, like reading and... Look away. <laughs> Maybe I can give these kids a book. Help shrink their brains. The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone. Okay. Yes, I can't. Okay. Special coal pellets burn with an orange glow. What's that? Ruffled grouse taxidermy. Hello, mister. Young girl, barely four or five years old, sits in the sofa. She's looking at you with, with frank curiosity. She clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. The twins outside your brother? Yes. You they don't want to play with me. They're older and play outside. They look the same. <laughs> Sometimes I can't tell them apart. They look identical, right? I said the same thing. They look identical. Uh, <laughs> Are you Lily Lian's daughter? Yes, I am. Little Lily. Do you know my mom? Okay, let's let's count the pillows here. It's a futon. The boys probably sleep one and two, and then she sleeps with her mom on, on the futon. Yes, we met earlier. That's nice. My mom is great. She's never angry or anything. What's that? Point the stuffed bird hanging from it's the ceiling. It's a grouse. She yelps, smiling Wasn't broadly. Gar, the cafeteria manager tried to repair a piece of taxidermy. Yes, but what is it for? I don't know. Well, can I have it? Sure. Just go and get it. I don't like it anyways. It looks angry. All right. You just need to grab it from the ceiling and go. What's the thing you're holding? It's Lammy. He's my friend. Sort of. Like... She holds a fuzzy beast up to demonstrate. Lambie is a stuffed lamb that, admittedly, has seen better days. One of the eye buttons is missing, and the fur is tattered in several parts. Hey, it's important, Cat. I need to learn how to read. Okay, please meet you, Lambie. Lammy usually doesn't like strangers. But you're also fuzzy, like Lammy. Bye. Goodbye. Right, girl's large, curious eyes remain fixed on you. Okay. She doesn't like it, so I'm going to take it. A little morally uh, questionable there, but that's fine. Let's go talk to Mama. Hi, the sea's gonna calm down soon. I can feel it. The wind is turning southeast. What's on your mind, officer? That's a motor carriage in the sea, by the way. Quite the sunken vehicle. Oh, that's good to know, I guess. Why is it in the sea? Got drunk and apparently drove it in the sea. This calls for a funeral, if you ask me. Are you suggesting we honor my carcass in my former motor carriage? Hi. Feels deserved, don't you think? Falling in the line of duty like that and all? What an odd thought. Maybe I should. Why odd? Our things are part of our life world. They're made with our human sweat and they share human history. We should care about them as we care about humans. To some extent, at least. Life world? Someone's been reading up on last century Gottwaldian philosophers. Play it cool now. All right, I'm in, but organizing a funeral takes a lot of time and effort, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you won't even be able to get it out of the water before early June. And where are you going to bury it? 
who to invite, what music to play at the wake. He just walked into a child's house wearing a yellow rubber gloves and carrying a crowbar and stole their grouse. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Take it from someone who's been through a few funerals. It's easiest to just leave them there and let nature take care of it. That's all we have time for right now anyway. Come back here in June and see how you feel about it then. It's not like it's going anywhere. Let's focus on the things we can actually do, all right? Absolutely. Things like what, for example? Uh, I'll be seeing you. Yes. I mean, you have to. You got to be able to uh, walk into strangers' houses and steal the grouse. Okay, let's go talk to the damn drunks. A lot of the adventure games I play. Bushes are too thick and thorny to pass through. They can steal your money. Let's talk to these losers. Unshaven man with a ruddy nose. He narrows his eyes as if in recognition and turns his head away. The noxious odor emanating from the drunken man is strong and familiar. Ugh, gross. Don't you call her? Yeah! Don't you call her, my girl. Sorry about that. Who's Abigail? Uh -huh. Abigail. Don't you fucking call Abigail. Yes, I did sneeze so hard. That's what I do. You're not going to get anything out of this guy. He's too drunk. I'm calling Abigail. Hey, tequila! A 30-something man clad in a two-piece lycra tracksuit puts down his pilsner and extends your hand, hand in greeting. Good to see you. How's business? How's the whole reality situation treating you? I've talked with this guy for Idiot Doom Spiral. Shh. Don't shake it. So hand. what's happening? Wipes his hand in his dirty lycra pants and picks up his beer. Wait, tequila? Yeah. Tequila Sunset. How are the, um, high-concept, reality-based adventures proceeding? Idiot Doom Spiral is my spirit animal. Uh -oh. He says it like it's obviously your name. Like you call someone Billy Brunel or leader of the 4th Street Gang. I'm too hot. I'm on a 50-year losing streak. That's harsh. I'm like... Three or maybe four years into mine. Wait, no. Make it five. He looks at his shit stained liquor with a grim expression. Things aren't going super well for Idiot Doom Spiral either. Haven't found those keys yet. Haven't won that great piece of ass back. No word from my business buddies. I call this painting is just like this chaotic mess. Idiot Doom Spiral, huh? This is bound to be a good, high-concept conversation. At last. What is a tequila sunset? I keep saying it. It's you. Your tequila sunset. How do you know this? We've met before. Don't you remember? No, you sure don't. No. Aha. Uh -huh. 
Do you want to know how Tequila Sunset came to hey, be? Hey, Vanna. Thanks for joining us. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Let me take a sip to moisten up my cords. Tequila Sunset rolled into Martinez last Friday. And by Tequila Sunset, I mean you. The man, the myth. Wait, do we meet on Friday? Hey, let's not jump ahead of ourselves. This is your story. Stop interrupting. <sighs> you got here on Friday to solve a case, hoping to be the early bird who gets the worm. And by the worm, I mean the buzz. Because as far as I know, all you did was get pissed drunk. Word on the street is you went around the local hostel telling people that you're a police officer and that it would be really fucked up if you shot yourself in the head right in front of them. That's pretty high concept, if you ask me. It is. <sighs> the lieutenant's brow is furrowed. He's listening as casually as, as casual. he can. <sighs> what happened then? It was a late Saturday night when we, the Union of Marabund Alcoholics, were getting our drink on. Nothing remarkable about this, we get our drink on 24-7. Makes everything warm and glowy. I trust you know the feeling. Kim is here for the shade of it all. Absolutely. One moment we hear the sound of a motor carriage revving up somewhere on the plaza, followed by a series of dings and bangs. Do you remember the sound of wood cracking? The billboard? Naturally, loud noises pique the interest of anybody owning a pair of ears. That's just the reality we're in. Naturally. Anyway, there was a brief silence. A gasp of silence, if you will followed by a real commotion. We heard the carriage careening towards the coast at top speed. I can see how you and idiot Doom Spiral uh, Equus really do resonate. That sounded like someone jumped the canal. We grabbed our brewskis and rushed to the jetty. Never underestimate the speed of an alcoholic. What we saw was a sight to behold, a beat up police carriage containing you. Right there on the beach, you rev the engine and scream to the top of your lungs, The time hath come! So, naturally, being the curious cat I am, I asked what time hath come? To which you replied, The time hath come for tequila sunset, the end of all things! Oh God, what happened next? Your reality contracted. You jammed the pedal, plowed right off the jetty, and through the ice. The muscles in your right leg tense up. We ran towards the ice whilst you crawled your way out, miraculously unhurt, covered in seaweed and shit, <laughs> like some kind of sea monster. When we finally got there, you were sitting on the beach crying. You said that your badge and uniform were in the car. It was too late to get in there, though. The carriage had sunk too deep. <laughs> Break the lube's reality. Recognizing a brother in need, we offered our condolences and invited you to party with us, which you naturally agreed to. I agree, Cat. We asked about the whole tequila sunset thing, and you told us it was your name now and insisted that we all call you that from then on. Wait, so is tequila sunset an event or a name? I'm not sure. I think you were the event. Tequila Sunset. You know, as opposed to a tequila sunrise, which is long gone. My real name is Harry. No, that's just what your mother called you. Your real name is Tequila Sunset. Just embrace it, brother. How long did we party for? Hours. It was an all night drinkathon. Then, at some point, I think it was Sunday morning, you got belligerent and wanted to talk about Revacholian women. In the new vampire game, V5, they finally added a mechanic where you could take, along with taking physical damage, like, say, falling down the stairs or getting hit by a car, you could take willpower damage from 
horrible and embarrassing situations or being called to the carpet by, say, the harpies. I'm taking willpower damage dealing with this. Oh, hey. How they're beautiful and also whores and so on. How one of them fucked you real bad. After a short while, you crossed the event horizon, looked sullen, got up, and left without saying anything. Damn it, Harry. Wow, that's quite a story. Yeah, I bet Tequila's a fucking legend around the precinct. You must be proud to work with him. If you only knew. <laughs> uh, uh, I mentioned losing anything else. Beside your gun and your badge, you said something about your hope or heart or something. To be honest, the details are a little hazy. In retrospect, I guess you lost your motor carriage too. That's a big one. Say anything with my colleagues? You told us that they were a bunch of fucking losers whose main interest was cramping your style. No specifics, though. It was more about you that night. You were the star of the show. <sighs> Say anything about the case? Yeah, you said it was no biggie and that you'd solve it in no time. And that you didn't need anyone to do it. You're doing it solo now. A lot of cops go solo and hermit once they reach that level of alcoholism. <laughs> it's like we have codified levels of alcoholism in the police. It's like, oh yeah, Billy's reached level six. You know, once he gets to level seven, he's gonna he's gonna move out of his house and start living out of his car. <laughs> We talk um politics? Yeah, you kept talking about how the coal mine owners were fucking us all over, just like that woman fucked you. I didn't agree with you, by the way. The spectral hand of the market makes sure everyone gets exactly what they deserve. It takes a long sip of this beer. That's a pretty big beer. He's been taking many big sips. Tell me about it. Say anything specific with the person that fucked me? You were pretty vague about it. But you kept saying you got fucked real hard, and that we've all been fucked too. No one's fucked me. I do the fucking around here. Abigail. <laughs> it seemed pretty painful, to be honest with you. If I had to guess, I'd say you're still working through some shit. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, spot on. You kind of read what cop I was. You kept apologizing for being such a bad cop and for the damage you've inflicted on everyone around you. You also kept pausing to knock the heel of your hand against your temples, saying, stupid, stupid, stupid. <sighs> I don't need to hear anymore. It's a hard thing for a man to confront his past. That's why I avoid mine at all costs. What do you guys do around here besides drinking? We are saving the world. He looks at his comrades. Please. Please don't call. Don't call. God. I'm like having repressed memories like pop up of like drunk friends I've had. Begs the man in the pipe. Okay, we're drinking. We're drinking alcohol. That's what we're doing. I tried to save the world once, a long time ago, with enterprise, creativity, and willpower. But that didn't work out. So now, it's a pirate's life for me. Seems like you're characterized by your storytelling ability. Want to tell me another one sometime? Whoop-dee-doo. So now, I'm a fucking storyteller. Right. Why not? Better than a beach bum. Yes, want to tell me how you became Idiot Doom Spiral? It depends, really. Are you willing to help me out? What do you need? Booze. Did you already forget our party? The thing I relayed to you earlier. So, have you got anything for good old idiot Doom Spiral? Got some sweet Commodore Red? for a classy. 
He snatches the bottle and pushes the cork through the bottleneck. Hey, Spiral Boy, <laughs> in. you gonna share that? One of the other bums interjects. Don't call Abigail. Like how his names don't call Abigail. Shut up, guys. I'm telling a story here. Shut up, guys. Shut up. Something happened to you. Something happened to me, too. My actual name is George. But around here, you already know. I was once a reasonably high net worth individual, a founder slash junior partner at a high concept creative services agency. When my story begins, I had just landed a major contract with an insurance this game firm. is so good. I used the profits from my agency to finance what I called a cultural incubator. Abstract value generation, value per person, high concept stuff. He's a blown out tech bro. Like, startup. I developed the paradigm, worked within the paradigm, but the burden of leadership weighed heavily on me. So I went jogging every so often to keep myself sane. Wait, how many people do you have working for you? 22 full time employees. An all-star team, a potentially historical set of individuals. Worrying about them often kept me up well into the morning hours. The jogging help? It did. With my trusty Sansarik tracksuit, I felt like I could conquer the world. But now dreams are worn thin, much like my tracksuit. He says thoughtfully, brushing dust off his shit-stained pants. <laughs> what happened? One day I left on my evening run. As you may know, it's impossible to clear your head when you're distracted by the sound of keys jangling in your pockets. He shakes the bottle and makes a ringing sound. His eyes are clouded. His dilated blood vessels encircle in his irises like stinging brambles. His eyes are your eyes. Yes, they are. So I removed the key ring and put the keys for the front gate and the apartment into different pockets to stop the jangling, you see? At least, that was the plan. I was halfway done with my usual lap when it started to rain. The reality situation became very wet, very quickly. How wet are we talking? Wet, okay? It was raining really hard. Tracer direction is I made my way back home and discovered that I didn't have the key to the front gate. I'd mixed it up with the key to the letterbox, which was useless. Naturally, the situation required me to climb over the gate, which I did. There was no climbing down because I slipped and landed on my ass. Reality was looking rather grim just then. Me lying on my ass in a mud pit in the middle of a heavy shower. But when life knocked me down, I always got up. So I made my way across the yard. Standing in front of my apartment door, fumbling with my pockets, I realized that I'd also forgotten my apartment key. You gotta be shitting me. I wish I were, Tequila. I wish I were. Instead of my apartment key, I'd taken the key to the office. So what happened next? I rang my neighbor's buzzers. It was late, and most of them didn't even answer. Those who did assumed I was trying to sell them something and hung up before I could even explain the situation. People are naturally wary of ad men, you see? One moment someone chats you up, five minutes later you've bought a box of edible lingerie and a strap-on. I mean... I don't begrudge them, especially since I was known to be... Just then, I experienced a moment of clarity. I still had the key to my office. I could wait out the storm there. But when I reached my office, I remembered that I'd asked one of my producers to change the locks that day. And since I hired only the best, he'd already done it. And I couldn't get in. Anyway, long story short, life spiraled out of control. I haven't gotten into my apartment for years, and my girlfriend left me because she didn't want to date a homeless man. The company, well, you see where I'm going with this. Idiot doom spiral. So, now you've heard my tragic tale. What do you think? Like nothing you've ever heard, huh? <sighs> he just kept failing roles. 
Uh, wait, is that it? I feel like there's some steps missing. Tequila, I've thought about this series of events for a long time. If there was anything else to it, I would have thought of it by now. Why didn't you go to the authorities? Well, at one point they came to me, but, you know, I, I didn't have any ID on me. So they tossed me in jail for two days. Born loser. I can't say it increased my faith in the RCM. No offense, gentlemen. Look at the price side. At least you got one hell of a story. Yeah. Maybe I've exaggerated certain parts over the years. When you tell a story too often, it begins to take on a life of its own. But what matters is that it's true to my subjective experience. Anyway, that was all the story one bottle gets you. Almost empty, this one. Truly, he has the soul of an artist. Why do you keep losing all your stuff? Good fucking question, Tequila. If I knew the answer, you think I'd be hanging out on a beach in this formerly premium, but now extremely dirty, two-piece Lycra tracks? It's like I keep running into re reflections of myself. This is horrifying. I used to own my reality situation. My business buddies and I had our own creative services agency. I had a nice apartment, an even nicer piece of ass. But somehow it all got away from me. Now I can't hang on to anything. Just last week I stole this nice new jacket, but then I lost it too. The only things I haven't lost are these two drunks. A lost jacket? Sounds like a mystery you could look into. What's up with the tracks? What is it about lost jacket? Tequila, it's a verifiable tragedy. It was practically brand new. Sure, it didn't really go with my Lycra threads, <laughs> Lycra. but it did itch a lot less. Say, you're a detective, right? Maybe you can help old Doom spiral out. Solve the case of the missing jacket. What do you God, say, break this guy's losing streak. It's okay, sure, we need to lose if it. If I knew where I lost it, don't you think I'd have it? I mean, maybe I was up by the boardwalk, or walking along the beach, or checking out the abandoned fish market. A lot of places. Somewhere north of here, that's for sure. You could ask around, see if anyone's seen it. What's the name of your agency? My agency. Man. The Boom Boom Room. Our concept was combining high art with the lowest forms of marketing. The color red, breasts, and oil painting. Okay. I convinced my partners to reinvest some of our profits in an even more high-concept cultural incubator called Thin Air. The artists were happy, the clients were happy. I was financing a group of poets in East Rebishal who were developing a new universal poetic language. But then it all went to shit. <laughs> it looks towards the bay. If it sounds like it makes no sense, that's because it doesn't. Man, mixing high and low, commodifying culture, that's... That's so high concept, I don't know what it all means. I know. It was fucking awesome. Until I went on a jog. Unleashing a cascade of doom that washed it all away. It's a long series of bad dice rolls. <sighs> Could happen to any of us. He takes a long, wistful sip of his beer. What's up with the tracksuit? What? You've never seen 100% Lycra before? Go on. Feel that primo material. The man extends his arm. Touch it. Pretty nice, huh? This might be one of the last of its kind. Should probably be in a museum, honestly. Takes another step. Good God. It's nearly impossible to describe how dirty this texture is. It's like rubbing two jellyfish skins together. You feel about 15% less human for having touched it. Randomized trials have also found Lycra, TM to be associated with a number of exotic, highly malignant cancers. So you also have that to look forward to. And then there's the smell. 
but you don't even want to think <laughs> about that. Wow, you're lucky. He never lets me feel it. That's because your paws are fucking filthy, Rosie. We're right next to the bay. You could wash them any time. How about the other drunks? My fellow members of the Union of Moribund Alcoholics? They're exactly what they look like. Hey, Tequila! You wanna buy some speed? Shut the fuck up, Rosemary. He's a cop, remember? I thought he was a cool cop. Don't call up a guy. And this is Abs. <sighs> so yeah, that's basically us. We drink together. Conclude. I'm all ears, Tequila. Yeah, any more stories? I do. But as you can see, my fuel tank is running quite low. If you catch my drift. I don't have any more on me right now. Cottonmouth is keeping my tongue imprisoned. Be seeing you. You too, Tequila Sunset. Wow. Good to see you, friend. Do I have deals set up for you, <clears throat> buddy boy? He's put his arm in the blister to embrace you. What are you talking about? So what do you want? I've got smokes. They're cheap. Very cheap. I've got pills now. Great deal. You won't get a better deal on that piss. Spirits I can let go for 300 real. I also 100. have speed. And by speed, I mean amphetamine. Why does a bottle of spirits cost 300 real? See, friend... It's real valuable. Worth every real, if you catch my drift. Got it from a bit of a business venture. Brings out a one liter bottle of bluish liquid. His mouth's corked shut. Not let him speak. You know, it's funny, actually. <laughs> he bursts out laughing and takes three gulps of his pills and stares at you intensely. He's finding it difficult to focus his watery gaze. What is? What? Keep him talking. You mean what? What do you think it was funny earlier? This guy, this guy. Where'd you get the bottle of spirits from? Oh, this is medicinal spirits. The good stuff. Got it from the doctor's office. I got one of those scientific ampoules a few months ago. Torpedo, they call it. It's supposed to keep a man from taking a drink. He spits a nasty yellow clot in the ground before you. Then stop me for shit, that's for sure. Five lemons with half a pack of butter and you're good to go. That sounds dangerous. It was. In a week, the goddamn kidneys started giving me all kinds of help. Finally, the missus took me to a private doctor's office. Not a charity, the real thing. Those arseholes. Those arseholes charged me four real to remove the damn thing. But I came out on top after all. <laughs> Had no shame for taking money for a service they provide. The idiots left me alone in there. Now, I used to teach high school biology. I know what doctors use to preserve dead fingers. Oh, God. He gets a gleam in his, sighted gleam in his eyes. Like three cans of this blue medicinal stuff from the back room. Threw the snakes out and voila. What's left is this beautiful blue stuff. 98.7% almost pure alcohol. No! It's <laughs> Two I already sold to these fine gentlemen here. But this last one is yours for three real if you want it. Don't say it. I think it'll prove useful, yes. Three real and it's yours, friend. The deal of a lifetime. Well done. You got it. That's a much more reasonable price right there. Makes sense now. Here's the money for the spirits. Just make sure to enjoy that one, friend. If you drink this, then you will die. That's a fact. And that's why we're going to save you from yourself and store this as a sellable item. <laughs> Go sell it at the pawn shop for a profit. Quite a business venture we set up here. Oh, the system's been good to old Rosemary here, and I'm milking her like a bitch goat in the backyard. What do you mean? You see, friend... Man makes his own luck, and I made mine real good. Got my hands on three bottles of liquor exqueeze. Sold two to the fellows around here, and immediately invested the profit. Bought cigarettes, bought beer, even bought a bit of speed. And look at me now, I got everyone on my hook. He spreads his arm and smiles a crooked, toothless smile. The hook? Where is it? I can't see it. Looks like you're on your own hook. Of course.
course, of course, of course. It is what it is, you know. What it's always been. People, buddy boy. It's the people. I'm off. In the civilised world, it's a custom to tip the shopkeep, friend. But come back anyway. <sighs> wow. What a mess. I say as I'm drinking my uh, cider here. Oh. A drop in temperature, an easy flow of air, an empty street. Before you, a thoroughfare unjammed with lorries. No more drivers smoking on hitch steps. Just silence. What did the smoke smell like? Chemically sweetened. Across the road, a forgotten bus stop. Corrosion has opened a hole in its roof. An elm tree watches over the building. Its branches are dripping with rain and snow. The road is smooth and motley. Craters filled with a black asphalt. The asphalt first laid is grey already. A row of tenements are under construction in the distance. Who are the people who live across the road? A tub warm with water, white with soap. A man bathes while radio waves transmit the lottery numbers. Four, eighteen, twenty-one, four, one. A modern washing what? machine rattles a drawer full of silverware. About the bus stop. Number 312D. Young girls used to come here, huddled up, hoping for more warmth than their thin coats give them. The bus took them to school. It has not run for eight years. There were not enough girls to sustain its cost. What about the road? Craters pocked the surface. Children played in them until heavy trucks full of black pitch rolled in. The landowners have filled the craters with money. It is a vital artery of the flow of trade. There's one dog on the road. A dead dog lies flat about 200 paces away, right at the turn. A dead dog? The tragedy comes from the wheels of a fast RCM vehicle hurrying to work. The cold washes over you. The sound of the sea has grown distant. That's enough. The wind moves the aerosol. A detective stands behind the boom barrier. A breeze moves a curl of his hair. Okay, Shivers is wild. Well, like I said, the whole idea of we are talking about doing a different run sometime, but I probably won't have time. There's a million games out there, and I just don't have enough time to play them, but doing a Shivers and Drugs run would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh Shivers is a thing. Shivers is a thing. Huh. I'm gonna take a little little hop, a skip, and so on. Oh, what a mess. Rusty in letters, rust in letters read Mazut. Oh. Water runs from the west. Sources upstream. A broken pipe? Maybe. Oh. Little black swallow circles above you. Here it truck. I can get up here. No. Not yet, at least. The beams are splintered. The bridge didn't collapse on its own. Artillery broke it. Hey, look at that. I'll take that. That's a buck. Rear tire of our carriage adorns these reeds. Hi for my car, I may get thrown here. Yeah, loot. Oh, 
Quick travel unlocked. Quick travel? What's quick travel? Didn't expect that. Excuse me again. You know, if there's one thing I'm good at, it's sneezing. The kick drum pulse. Music is coming from somewhere on the ice. Do we have a map? I don't think I have a map. Badge, Malg, handwritten note. 16 days, apricot chewing gum, no map. <laughs> Buy one from the bookstore. Well, I might go do that next, but I want to go poke at this. Looking back at you. Looking back at you for the rust colored water, you. Yeah, that's uh, that seems to be the theme of this. Of this, there's a lot of looking back at myself and running into people who are just uh, facets of myself. Yet, Kim. Yeah, I need to go get a map. I'll get that right now. I got I got like six bucks on me, almost. That Kim still sticks with me. He could do better, you know? He could do better. Oh, 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 what's this? To the gl broken glass, dusty shelves and a forgotten chair. Got loud all of a sudden. There's that star again. Okay, let's see what we're dealing with here. Cold breezes that make the wall wall planks creak. Postcard, take all. Bow tie, take all. See a dark red chair in the dim light of the room. Oh yeah, I wonder why it's dark red. Looks like blood stains to me. Where did I get a Freaking bow tie. Okay, what am I wearing from a necktie? Inland um, Empire. But I could put this on for plus two drama. <laughs> I'll take that. Bow tie fancy. Purple even. Yes, indeed. Kim, why? You could do so much better. I have a goddamn mess. I have a mess of gargantuan proportions. 610, spring, sunset should be coming soon. I'm not gonna sell that alcohol. Because people will die. I'm just gonna keep it on me. I might be able to use it for something. So much to do in this game. So many people to talk to. So many stories. Let's see if I can find the map. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. The, the display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extreme. Poor little girl. Hi, Ace Detective. <sighs> Shelves filled to the brim with crime novels featuring. Nope. Don't care about Dick Mullen. Everyone knows the most interesting thing about Fasics was her magic. What? 
A sulfur-crested cockatoo sits on the cover, its beak slightly open. It looks as if the bird is calling out the book title. From A to Zurich, a guide to a well-behaved cockatoo. Hey, what about this guide to cockatoos? It's a must-have if you own a cockatoo. I've heard they're quite capricious. I can easily steal it. <laughs> Turns out that there are so many different cockatoo species, and they all have behavioral problems. Sounds about right. You don't have behavioral problems. That's garbage. You're cool. <laughs> Shelves full of biographies of famous people, whoever they are. Don't care about famous people. I care about maps. Several maps have been attached to a yes. bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol, and a map of Martinez. Look at the map of Revachol. The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. It is the river Esperance. Countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and oh, construction. Oh, that narrator's voice! Oh. To the east, rolling hillsides, Le Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up into the mega city. They sound rich to you. This is Rivershall East. And west of the river. Kudon. It's somewhere to live. Not bad. Then there's Jamrock. It's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Forberg. It's almost as bad and much larger. Then Coal City. It's the worst. In Martinez? It's so small you can't even see it on the map. No, wait. There it is. North of Jamrock. The strip of coast next to the Greater Rivershall Industrial Harbour. It looks downright despondent. It's almost Coal City, to be honest. Continue. No, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have, but it's still something. Streets and sodium lights, the sky, the world, you're still alive. Sodium lights, that glow. That sickly yellow glow of a world that you can never go back to. Storekeep, can I buy these maps? I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. And besides, you could scarcely afford them. They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. <laughs> you don't understand. I'm... Why isn't one of Martinez so cheap? That old thing. It's an out-of-date map of a tourist location that never was nor came to be. From when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago, they also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin-operated viewers, and designed the new street lamps. The place does not look like a successful tourist trap, does it? What happened then? They didn't get that far, for some reason. A shame the project never got going. Would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. Wanna buy a map of Martinez? Always good to be informed of your surroundings. Hey, I leveled up. Let's go to my brain case. Let's unlock a new spot. Let's do the motorway south. And with that. It's 11 o'clock here. <sighs> oh. This game is just the experience. If I would have encountered this game back when I was 16 to 21, I don't know. This is probably one of the best storytelling games and I've ever ever seen I cannot explain how much joy this game brings me the voice acting the writing the, the art the characters 
Mmm. Mmm. Just exquisite. Thank you, Echo Stunch Man, for uh, recommending this game to me. I mean, I was going to play it anyways, because uh, along with the Return of the Opera Din and Outer Wilds, it seems to be one of those games that everyone absolutely needs to play. I'm glad you're enjoying it, Cat. And, uh, yeah, thanks again, Equus. And I'm glad that uh, some people are watching my reactions. It is so good. It is so, so good. And I feel bad, too, because I never got... Um, Planescape missed me, because that happened to be, like, one of my gaps of game playing when I didn't have a very good computer. And uh, I know this game apes quite a bit of Planescape through a different lens. But it makes you almost want to play Planescape to see what it's about. <sighs> well, let's do one small thing before we go. Look at the map at Insulate. This large map displays archipelagos. You see a constellation of small dots on the light blue emptiness of the Insulindic Ocean. The largest in the northeast is Lakayu. You are here. Another far away in the southwest, Seminese Islands, Il de Phantom. I don't know about the. Uh, oh yeah, I did. I, I did remember countering the prion disease. Yes, yes. What else? Ozon, Laurentide, Fas Alamir, Archipelagos, North Arcade Islands, all just specks of dust on the vastness of the Insulindic. On the edges of the map, the color fades into a blur of dotted lines, black and white, disintegrating into mathematics. Something happened to this world. It's a real thing. There's a real disease that eats the, abil the abilities, brain's ability to make or process memories. Well, I mean, <sighs> doctors and scientists are discovering that what we call Alzheimer's is a, what we're Terming as Alzheimer's is a catch-all for a large number of neurological disorders. So I can see that. In the northeast, a dust mite stands on the north coast of Caillou in a bookstore. It's you. <laughs> you can see cities on the islands? You can on Caillou, Rivershaw, a single black star on Ozone, Fondelier. And Vimandu on Archipelagos, Croyan Moran, Villiers on Seminine, Oldivai, and on Laurentide, Deora of the Seven Seas. 850 million people live on these little dots, an oceanic world of culture and commerce torn apart by history. Look at the edges. The ocean breaks apart into a tangle of cosines and azimuths, all pointing into pale nothingness. Windy is the North Azimuth. Grad is the Northeast Azimuth. Samara is the East Azimuth. Seo is the West Azimuth. Isolas, they're called. Connections to other worlds. Words past the Insulindian are known to you. You only know you've never been there. 850 million people live on these tiny dots. An oceanic world. All right. And with that, I'm going to do a quick little save game. Doing this in chunks of an hour and a half. <laughs> the mask <laughs> always makes me sneeze. With that, we're going to call it here. It's been wonderful to experience this game with you. Thank you all for watching me. Everybody, please have a wonderful week. A wonderful weekend. Wrap up whatever Yuletide, Yuletime gift shopping you need to do. Enjoy your time with family and friends, for those who can. I love you all. And please make good decisions, unlike Harry.
but much like the mutton chops that came off. Hey, look, I didn't even notice that <laughs> he's missing it. I should have kept the chops on, but we'll go with it. Thanks, Fana, for coming out. Thank you, the rest of you, for watching it. Everyone have a good, nice holiday, and I'll see you next week. Good night.